Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning on this beautiful day that God has given us. As we gather here this morning, are there any blessings from this past week that we might want to share? Any blessings to share? Um, I'm on the final leg of healing on my eye, so. Congratulations on the final leg of healing on your eye. Glad it's getting better. Other blessings to share? Tomorrow is Judy's birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Other blessings to share. <laughs> Glad to hear your grandson's home. And uh, we pray for his continued recovery from that infection. So with those blessings shared and others that come to mind, may we always lift them up to God in gratitude. And may we now turn our hearts and our minds and our spirits to the worship of God. Once there was a man who did such amazing things and who said such wonderful things that people asked him who he was. And he answered them, I am the light of the world. And as we enter the season of Lent, metaphorically, the season gets darker, but that light continues to shine and nothing has overcome it. Please join me in the call to worship. From Bethlehem to Nazareth, from Jordan to Jericho, from Bethany to Jerusalem, from then to now, come, Lord Jesus, to heal the sick, to mend the brokenhearted, to comfort the disturbed, to disturb the comfortable, to cleanse the temple, 
to liberate faith from convention. Come, Lord Jesus. To carry the cross, to lead the way, to shoulder the sin of the world and take it away. Come, Lord Jesus. Today, to this place, to us. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Spirit and breath of life, before you we recognize that our spirits are not fully alive. We have succumbed to the sin of despair. We have been lifeless, not lively, in our faith. Like dry bones, we are brittle and break under pressure. Breathe your spirit of power into us that our faith may be active in word and deed, and that your name may be glorified in Jesus our Christ. Amen.
siblings in Christ. This is the good news. The good news is that we depend not on ourselves, but on the Spirit of God to give us vitality. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so it is Lent. It's easy to tell. We keep the seasons color-coded. Anybody know why Lent is purple? Repentance. And it reminds us that a, it's the color of royalty, and it reminds us that Jesus will come again as king. Um, although not a king like any of us would expect. And the fact that it is Lent means that there is Lent in a bag. We are focusing this Lent on the stories that happen in Bethany. So this bag is Lent at a place called Bethany in a bag. And some, while we're going to be talking about some of the big stories that happen in Bethany, we are also going to be talking about the different ministries that we have here at Bethany. So this is a prayer chart, and these are a list of things to pray for each day. And as you go, there's a color, purple colored pencil in the bag so that you can color off where you are on the Lent journey and pray the way through the list. Now one of the things that's going to strike you is that 40 days doesn't work exactly. Anybody know why? Nope, it is that we do not count the Sundays in Lent. Sundays are always little feast days because it's the first day of the week, and we do not count Holy Week. The count technically started on Ash Wednesday, so there are a couple of, there are four prayers here that we didn't get because we're not starting till today, but you have plenty of places where you can put those prayers on Sundays or during Holy Week. One of the stories that we are going to hear, I left him out in the display. The raising of Lazarus. Um, Jesus comes to Bethany at the bequest of Mary and Martha to help them after their brother has died. Um, you will find in the bag a couple of these. Get it out. Little people. There's also Kleenex in here in a little packet that you can cut into strips. Um, give Lazarus some eyes. Um, you might color his face a little green or gray. He's been dead for a couple of days by the time Jesus calls him out. Um, then you can put this where your devotions are for Lent, and you might write, I wrote on mine, come out, because that's what Jesus says to Lazarus. Uh, but use it in your devotion areas to, to remind you that new life is coming. Then I have a, a Bible race for you to do with your family or your next door neighbor or just in your household. But um, the biblical number for Lent is 40. These will help you find where the 40 comes from. And the back of it is a sort of question and answer about Lenten practices for your family. Answers are down here if you can't answer them. Um, right off the top of your head. One of the things that we talk about is baptism. 
um, as we come into the Easter season. That's very common for new Christians to be baptized into the church. This is an exercise for a baptism collage. Get your family photos together of your own baptism, your kids' baptisms, your grandchildren's baptisms. Do this exercise together, cut out the shapes, and make a collage of the baptisms, of the way that links us not only to our family, but to the generation of Christians who have gone before us. And again, set that wherever your devotions are set up or on your kitchen table so that you can see it and remember. There is the Book of Lenten devotions that the UCC has put out in each bag. Um, it's daily reflection, and Pastor Chris is offering on Sunday mornings at 9 a time to reflect and review and think about together the prayers and readings in here. And let's see. Um, one of the stories that we hear as we come into the end of Lent um, and the beginning of Holy Week is the story of Mary anointing Jesus' feet and drying his feet with her hair. Um, anointing is an old practice um, in the ancient world, and you'll find some information about it, but you will also get a vial that has a little bit of frankincense oil in it and on more olive oil. Um, I invite you to you can pour this into water and wash your family's feet together. You can use the oil. You might want to add a little more olive oil to it if that's, if that's what you're going to use it for. The, what does it feel like to be cared for like Mary cared for Jesus? What does it feel like to offer that kind of care? So let this be a reflective practice for you. And it wouldn't be a bag from me unless it had a recipe in it. So, anybody know what simmel cake is? It's an, it's an old English custom. Um, and it usually happened on the fifth Sunday in Lent. Sometimes it's called Mothering Sunday. And in the great houses that had lots of servants, they were allowed to make on that Saturday a simmel cake, which is, there are lots of ways to make simmel cake. Traditionally, it's made with marzipan, um, but any bread, um, any quick bread recipe will do. There is a recipe for it here. Um, the point of the simmel, simmel cake was to take home for the staff to take to their mothers or to visit their families before the Easter feast because they would be working Palm Sunday and Easter. So the traditional simmel cake um, has apricot jam and things in it um, and nuts. I have given you all almonds if you want to use them. They are all in their original packing, so anybody who has nut allergies, do not worry. It, there are usually apricots or apricot jam in simmel cakes, so you have 11 pieces of dried apricot. And the tradition is that those 11 pieces go on the top of the cake to remember the disciples minus Judas. So those are all the things that you will find in your bag. I hope you will take them and use them. They are out in the back. I have a few more um, down in room 102 if anyone wants to grab one down there. But I hope that as you use them, you will take pictures of what you do and send them along. Um, it would be fun to share, like our baptism collages or pictures of your simmel cakes, or whatever you do to keep a holy Lent. And as we are invited to keep a holy Lent, we 
travel on this journey with the peace of Christ going with us wherever we go and wherever Lent takes us. The peace of Christ be with you. And, also with you. and let us share words and signs of peace with one another on this day. The word of Scripture that greets us this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew. We read from chapter 25, beginning in verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people, one from another, as a shepherd separates sheep from the goats. And he will put sheep at his right hand and goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. 
I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. <clears throat> then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are cursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devils and the angels and his angel. For I was hungry and you gave me food, no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. And may we respond together. For the word, the of, word God of God in scripture, in scripture for, the word, for the word of God, of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Oh God, in this new day, we are grateful for this gathering, for this moment to listen and to speak, for this moment to be and to be inspired to do all in your name and for the sake of the building of your kingdom here on earth. Now, O oh God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts may be acceptable in your sight. For you alone are our rock, and you alone our redeemer. And for this, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. Did you ever notice that there's no shortage of churches named Bethany? There's actually quite a lot of them. There's ministries named Bethany. There's lots of institutions of support and care that carry the name Bethany. Named after a place, of course, a place we hear about in the scriptures. And of course, this church is named Bethany, Congregational Church. What's interesting, though, as I keep doing research, is I haven't gotten my finger on why Bethany has become such a popular name for a church. So often in our congregational tradition, we're simply 
named the Congregational Church of such and such a town. Or we're the first Congregational Church because we were the church that was established when the town was. Because in our Puritan history, in order for a town in Massachusetts to be established and recognized, there needed to be a church, a meeting house, where the community gathered, both for religious reasons, the worship of God, but also for social reasons, and also the running of the town. We might say for political reasons. And then if you hear of second congregational churches, you know somewhere back in history there was an argument. And the way to resolve the argument was to split. But here we are with this name Bethany attached to us. And inspired, as I've written about and shared before, our angels that were up here for the Advent and Christmas season, how they were crafted by our artisans to be reflective of all that we encounter when we hear the stories in Scripture that take place in Bethany. So we'll journey this Lent when we gather here on Sundays and to Easter to hear about things that took place at Bethany. Now, Bethany still exists. It is in the Palestinian land. It actually goes by the name, which is translated uh, House of Lazarus, thinking about that most famous Bethany story, the raising of Lazarus. But when we look at the community and the town, it's some two miles away from Jerusalem. In fact, the story we'll hear next week takes place at a different Bethany than the one two miles from Jerusalem. But it's on the outskirts. And there's lots of research, reflection, of trying to understand what it was about this community, where it pops up so much in the Bible stories. Here are a couple of things to think about in general about Bethany. It was a place where pilgrims would land on their way to Jerusalem. This place of rest, this place of hospitality. As the faithful made their pilgrimage from Galilee down to Jerusalem and other points as well. Some ancient scrolls also suggest that Bethany was a place, because of how its name is translated as to house of the poor or the afflicted, that it was designated as one of the communities where the sick would go, the afflicted. And this place is also where they would be cared for, a place in where people who were destitute might end up as well. As sometimes Bethany is translated house of the poor. So imagine this place, this town, where people are coming and they have a need. They're sick, they're infirmed, they're struggling, and they come here, and this place is a place where they can be. And there must have been people there to take care of them, to help them. Imagine this place, Bethany, where people are cared for, physically sick, 
but also, as we know from the biblical traditions and outlooks of the day, to often carry an illness or disease, a physical one, was often interpreted as a sign of sinfulness, incorrectly so, and also a reason to separate people, that they were not part of the community. So I wonder, I wonder as we think of ourselves as a community called Bethany, that we are a place where we come and receive people, people who might feel excluded, left out, people who have been pushed away, but also a place where people come who are not feeling well, a place to be when we're struggling with real illness of body, mind, or soul. To come and to be cared for and comforted. To know there is a community that prays for and helps and supports in that time of need. When one of us is overwhelmed feeling down, feeling ill in some way, shape, or form, that we are cared for and comforted. That in and of itself is the power and the promise of being a church to care for one another. But also, as Jesus reminds us in this text from Matthew to care for the least, to give the food, to give the water, to give the clothing, to remember that it is in looking and caring, looking out and caring for our fellow human beings that it, where we come and care and recognize the Christ, because Jesus is always with the lost and the least and the outcast. And for us to be with them is to care. To care. Now, if Bethany is also a place of stopping over on a pilgrimage, then it reminds us, too, how we we become a vital rest stop for people on the journey. Think about your lives. Think about all the people who have come through in the pilgrimage of life to stop here along the way for a baptism, for a confirmation, for a wedding, for a funeral. Stopped along the way, in the midst of the journey, when they're tired and need rest, or stopped along the way when there's just questions and wonderings. And this is a place where there's hospitality, where there's an openness and a welcome spirit to receive to have that opportunity to just engage with one another, to share our journeys, to be inspired by one another, to be challenged by one another, to find comfort, to be a place, a rest stop in the midst of a pilgrimage is very important. It reminds us the journey is long in the first place, and it's going to take some time. And it's important to pace ourselves and to take advantage of the places of rest and the company and the welcome that comes from those places. So I wonder, I wonder at this place called Bethany, much like the Bethany we will reflect upon in the coming weeks, what is it we celebrate 
and give thanks for in the blessings that have happened as a place of care and comfort and support for those who are hurting, for those who are looking for a rest, for those who are on a journey. And what else might God be inviting us to do to live more fully into the promise that comes in our namesake? How might our welcome get even wider? How might our reach get any further? How might our care go even deeper? How might we find new ways, along with the great traditions, of feeding and giving drink and refreshment, of giving clothing, of giving care and support for bodies and for spirits? It's this place called Bethany that clearly was something that was attracting when we hear about it in the scriptures. And it's this place called Bethany that contains all of that too. May we be encouraged and challenged by all that we will see happening in that place called Bethany a long time ago. And all that will happen here in this place called Bethany, both yesterday and today and tomorrow. Would you please join me in the response? May God bless us all with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships, so that we may live deep within your heart. May God bless us with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people, so that we may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that we may reach out our hands to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. May God bless us with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that we can do what others claim cannot be done to bring justice and kindness to all our children and the poor. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, are there joys or concerns that we wish to have held up in community on this day. Continued prayers for Mary as she is back in the hospital and also for those who are caring for her. Prayers for safe travels. With those prayers held together now in community, may we lift them up along with the silent meditations of our hearts, beginning first in silent conversation with our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer.
God of grace and God of glory. On us, your people here, may you pour your power. May you pour your wisdom and love. May you pour your encouragement. May you pour your vision. For our discipleship. To be a people and a place where all are welcome, a rest stop for pilgrims on their life journey. A place of comfort and respite and support, particularly for those who are in need of care, the sick and the ailing, the troubled and the challenged, those who struggle and live without. Remind us of our sacred calling and inspire us in our work. We give thanks for the many many ways over countless generations. That this community has provided such care and support, such welcome, and sought to expand it and deepen it. And we pray to find even new and different ways and opportunities to live in, to being Bethany. along with prayers for this church community, we lift up prayers from our hearts prayers for those who are struggling, facing illness, may your spirit be with them. just as our spirit is with them too. May it give comfort and encouragement, strength and hopefulness. God of grace and God of glory, for all you pour out to us, May we remember all that we have and have been given that we might be able to pour out into other lives. So we humbly offer this prayer, even as we are bold to pray as Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God has abundantly blessed us and called us to be a community that honors each other, to serve others with joy, and to share our love and material possessions. Let us rejoice in what has been given and what is ours to give. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to share in your creative and restorative work among people. Because you blessed us, we have much to give. These offerings express our gratitude and our aspiration to be more fully your own loyal community. Amen.
may be seated for a few announcements. Prior to our time of fellowship downstairs in the hall, a reminder that we continue to welcome uh, people's contributions and traditions and experiences with their most meaningful hymns and contemporary songs. The material is out in the narthex if you want to be part of that project. Uh, along with Lent in the bag, we still do have a few of paper copies of the Lenten devotional. Um, or if you'd prefer uh, an electronic version, the office can send you one as well. Uh, please remember, as announced last week, that we have uh, set a date in April for a Mission Possible Day. And we're looking for some folks who'd be interested in helping to plan that event. You can reach out to Heidi Hobbs if you're interested in that. And so with those announcements made, I would invite us to rise in body or in spirit as we hear words of benediction. The light of Christ never, ever leaves us. It changes us, and we are invited to take that light with us to change the world. And so, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of us now and forevermore. And let God's people say, Amen. Amen.